Oh yeah, he's back. One of our childhood heroes. Jackie Chang's new movie, The Foreigner, was released worldwide October 13th. So a few things we have to ask ourselves. Is this movie one of the same inspirational, amazing things that made me and everyone else take up karate as a kid? Is this a call to form for Jackie Chang, who we haven't really seen since Rush Hour 3 in 2007? Or is this film a transition film for him to go into new genres for this aging movie legend that is Jackie Chang? And what does this say for Christians as believers? And why does it not quite sit right because of what it says about peace? All right, let's get into the movie. Now, The Foreigner is your typical revenge film. It's about a man named Quam whose daughter is killed. This sets him off on this journey to go track down his daughter's killers. This leads him down a path in conspiracy in a dark world involving the IRA. Now, before we get into the actual details of it, let's see how this movie was doing at the box office because that is always what Hollywood wants to know. It's made almost $100 million in one weekend, which is crazy, but it's important to note that 12 million of it was domestic, meaning the United States. Most of the box office was worldwide, which shows the incredible draw and appreciation that Jackie Chan has worldwide. That's, that's absolutely stunning what they accomplished. Now, Martin Campbell is the director of this film. Martin Campbell's done some great projects and some not so great projects, some great ones like Casino Royale, one of the best James Bond movies. Also, he did stuff like Green Lantern. Yeah. So that means this could have gone anywhere. Now my critic review, what do I think about the critics? My view is almost exactly what you'll see on Rotten Tomatoes. It's kind of an eh, like right in the middle. There's a few reasons for that. One, Martin did a pretty good job of mixing up the shots and you know, setting things apart per scene. Every scene feels a little bit different, but it is slow, it is drawn out, it is dark. I will say they did a good job of using practical effects. The explosions and action sequences, most of the sets were real, there wasn't a lot of CGI, which speaks to the tone and what they wanted to accomplish in the movie. They wanted the movie to be real and gritty, okay? And these movies, when they do that, are kind of hit or miss because it really depends on you caring enough about the person and then having the people be interesting enough to carry the story. Dark and depressing means it's boring and slow a lot of the times. And unfortunately, this movie fell into that trap. So my critic review is right at what the, the critics are saying, which is about 50%. I'm gonna give it a three out of five, like kind of right in the middle. This is slightly different for my viewer review. Now, if you are a big Jackie Chan action revenge movie fan like I am, it's a little bit more fascinating. And it's worth a see just because you could see this guy, it's, it's almost, it was this bizarre fascination watching him because you see this guy that you remember for energy and comedy and excitement doing a complete 180 where he's slow, sulking, and boring. And for me, it that almost engaged me more than the plot of the story, seeing this guy portraying a character completely different than what I've grown up and seen of him. Now, in that world for an audience, if you do not like Jackie Chan, if you're not into these revenge films, it's not gonna work for you, and there's a few reasons for that. The number one reason is there's zero character arc in this movie. Like, the characters are stagnant, they're the same person from beginning to end, so you don't really see a big transition. It's predictable and you don't care that much about the characters. For one, there wasn't enough development in them. Like, you know he loses his daughter. Spoiler alert. Okay, spoiler alert. His daughter is lost, but you didn't have any time to care about either one of them. And you're just thrust into this confusing dark world of the IRA and terrorists and all this jazz. So, you get, it gets lost on you as an audience member. Now. What's interesting for me is looking through the lens of faith on a project like this. Because we all deal with her, we all deal with loss, we all, um, we want, but we also want to stand up against evil. We all want to fight against evil. And there's plenty of verses saying just when, when it's okay to, to not to ignore sin is, is to sin yourself. And that's something that's very important. What's wrong with this film is there's no hope. Like one of the best revenge movies ever, I don't even call it really a revenge movie is Liam Neeson's Taken. Now, Taken is different because there is hope. He didn't set on this journey to, you know, find these sex traffickers because he, he was wronged in the past and he's just gonna kill these guys so he feels better. He's going after them because his daughter is in jeopardy. He's doing it for her. He's not doing it for his own selfish reasons. Unfortunately, in this movie, Jackie Chang's daughter is already lost. He's not gonna find any hope. There's not gonna be any absolution for him. And he's still gonna, at the end of the day, no matter how many people he kills, he's gonna feel the same way. In 1 Peter 3.9 it says, Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. For on the contrary, repay evil with blessing. Because 
To this you were called so that you may inherit the blessing. When you forgive, when you let God be God and you be you and you do the best you can with what you have and not try to step out of the line that God's given you, that is where you're going to find peace, that's where you're going to find hope because that he's never going to get his daughter back. And you know this going through the movie, you know Jackie's never going to fully be happy with what's going on. And so you, it's just inevitable, this depressing through line through the entire movie that you might not notice unless you look through it through that lens of fate. So that is my review of The Foreigner. Tune in next time for my next Rebel Reel review. And until next time, enjoy guys.